It was an isolated incident. We know enough now, we have enough evidence to confirm that this was an isolated incident that started from a dispute. And an arrest was made almost immediately, pretty quickly rather, very quickly uh, after the shooting. So I'm going to go over a few of the details about that, but a couple of things I want to emphasize. Um, officers, our officers were in the area where they were supposed to be, and really that resulted in the outcome that we had. Unfortunately, um, a young man lost his life, and uh, my heart goes out to his family and his friends and everybody who love him because this type of violence is absolutely unacceptable in our city or anywhere else. And there's a lot of talk about San Francisco and the things that happen here in terms of crime. Um, we don't tolerate this type of behavior. And this department, this police department, will do everything within its power, its legal authority, to make sure people are held to account. In this particular incident, our officers were there almost immediately. And that led to a broadcast being made and the people who we believe, um, the person who we believe, who committed this shooting and eventually this, this, this homicide was taken into custody very quickly. So let me give you a few details on how that happened. On last night on June 22nd at 8.39 p.m., our officers responded to Powell and Marker Street regarding a shooting. When they arrived at the scene, they located a victim who actually had made his way down to the bottom of the escalator at Holiday Plaza. That person collapsed and was rendered medical attention, transported to the hospital, and later died of his injuries. Despite the life-saving efforts of the personnel at scene, including our officers and the medics who treated him. From there, our officers observed two suspects matching the description that had been broadcast by police dispatch. They observed these two individuals enter a taxi cab and they broadcast that over the police radio and the dispatchers put that out as well. Other officers observed the taxi cab in the area of 14th and Mission. They conducted a stop, what we call a, a high risk stop, and they detained all the occupants in that taxi cab. In the taxi cab, was the person that we believe who committed this homicide, a 18-year-old male named Davion Crawford from Sacramento, California. There was also a female subject with Mr. Crawford. After the investigation at scene, we determined that Mr. Crawford, there was enough evidence to arrest and eventually book Mr. Crawford for this homicide. The female was released at scene, the subject, the female subject was released at scene as was the driver of the taxi cab. Mr. Crawford was booked at the San Francisco County Jail, Jail 1, and he was booked for this homicide, but it is still an ongoing and active investigation. Our investigators worked overnight to collect evidence. Uh, they are still reviewing that evidence, so we do still have work to do. But what we know so far, this was an isolated incident that stemmed from a dispute. So I want to thank all of uh, the people in the San Francisco Police Department, our officers, for really doing their jobs the way they were supposed to. They were right there, and unfortunately, them being right there didn't prevent this. But what it did do is allow for an outcome that led to a very, very speedy arrest of the individual that we believe committed this homicide. So with that, we'll take a few questions. Chief, uh, one quick, what can be done to combat what seems to be happening in terms of people coming into San Francisco and committing these crimes. So the latest data that we had from arrests that were made in the PL showed that relatively few people who were arrested in this latest enforcement effort were from San Francisco. This suspect is from the Sacramento area. Uh, the mass shooter from the Mission District was from outside of the city. What can be done and what is being done to try to prevent, for lack of a better term, uh, you know, tourism bandits? Christian, that's a great question. And one thing that we can do as a police department, we have to be out, we have to be present, we have to be visible. We have to be where we're supposed to be. I mean, uh, you know, our officers were out there last night. It didn't prevent this. However, when people who are prone to this type of, you know, spontaneous violence know that there is a good possibility that they will be captured and captured quickly, it is a deterrence. And we know that it matters. You know, we've seen our deployment 
uh, have the effect of driving down crime. We've done research on this uh, with the Goldman Policy Lab a few years back. The presence of officers matters. And when we are there, we're engaged with the public, when we're out and visible, it is a deterrent. So one of the things that we hope that people are seeing is that this city does not tolerate this type of behavior. And you know, we're going to do our part, and our part is to collect the evidence, to make the arrest, to give our district attorney and her team a chance of, of having a successful prosecution. When there's accountability, and that accountabil accountability is consistent, I do believe that it makes people think twice. And we need to be that city, and we want to be that city, and we're trying to be that city where people are held accountable when they commit, particularly gun violence. There, there's, there, we're seeing this all over the country. Uh, this city is no exception. And we need to do our part and make sure that we hold people accountable. So they don't want to come here and do those types of things. Is your note more detail on the nature of the dispute that led up to the shooting? I can't at this time, but I, we do know it was a dispute. Uh, we we have, have enough evidence to know that it was a dispute. As I said, you know, there is a lot of video in that area. My understanding is that some of the uh, people that were in the area, private individuals, uh, or cell, there may be cell phone video out there. So we do ask if anybody has any evidence, uh, you can call our tip line at 415-575-4444. Please turn that evidence into us. I mean, people are, we're at a point in society where a lot of people want to get their cell phone video out to the media. I, I don't, maybe there's some financial incentive to do that. But this is an ask from your police department and your police chief. If you want things to get better, give us the evidence to help us make things get better. I mean, it being on the news is, is good for the public to know, but we need the evidence in our possession so we can use that when we make an arrest so we can prosecute these cases successfully. So I'm asking the public, if you have evidence, particularly video, turn it into the San Francisco Police Department. You can share it with whoever you want to share it with. I mean, we can't control that piece nor will we try to, but we're asking to turn that evidence into us because we have solved uh, many a cases from that type of evidence, and it's very important. Did the victim and the suspect know each other? That we don't know at this point, um, and that is something that we're trying to flush out. Chief, any update on the OIS from yesterday? Um, the update that I can give you, unfortunately, as you all probably already know, um, one person uh, was murdered by the person who eventually became involved in the officer involved shooting. Um, that person, which I will call the suspect of the murder, um, also lost his life. And then there was a third person who was injured. Um, it's a very, very, very sad situation. I mean, this happened indoors inside of a residence. Um, there's still a lot that we have to confirm in terms of how this happened, we, we, but it's a sad situation. Uh, again, isolated and, and it doesn't have anything to do with any other, any other cases in, in the city. Do you know the relationship between the parties? Familiar relationships, yes. Uh, the, the, the deceased woman and the person who was uh, shot and eventually lost his life in the office involved shooting, mother, son. You guys, thanks a lot. We're going to have a town hall meeting on June 30th where we're going to have a lot more details on that.